another episode of the Cambridge United Road to Glory style series here on Football Manager. We start this episode with a look back at the last season. This episode is going to be probably split into two parts. This first section is going to be a season roundup of the previous year. And then the next bit will be a jump forward in time to post transfer window stuff. Or at least the start of the new season uh, whilst we'll have done some transfer stuff in the meantime. So let's start by just quite frankly looking through the English leagues as I can show you that Manchester United won the Premier League this year. A league that we will be partaking in next season, of course. Won it by a mile as well. Chelsea in fourth, Liverpool fifth, Leicester sixth, Tottenham seventh. That affiliation with Leicester will end when we move into the same division as them. Forest. Palace and Derby all relegated this season. We will not be playing them next year. We, oh, the playoff final hasn't been played yet. We are in the Premier League after winning the championship. Brighton will join us as well. One of Reading or Middlesbrough will also join us. MK Dons, Portsmouth and Forest Green were relegated this season. Peterborough, annoyingly, won the playoff final in League One against Huddersfield. Birmingham and Wickham will be in the Championship next year. Donny, Exeter, Barnsley and Fleetwood relegated down to League Two. League Two will no longer have Grimsby in it as they're League One now alongside Wigan, Colchester and Rotherham. Crawley and Aldershot, unfortunately for them, fall out of the Football League. Down to the National League, which will see Swindon come up to the Football League again alongside Stevenage. Eastleigh, Sutton, Solihull Moors and Maidenhead relegate us. Where Solihull Moors were actually in the Football League at some point in this save. Yeah, they were. And now they're back down to the National League North. Rip. Uh, sorry, Reese. The National League North. Halifax are up to the National League National, so to speak. And uh, Hereford will join them. Hednesford, Brackley, Warrington and Kettering relegated. And then from the South... Concord Rangers up to the level above. Kingstonian as well, 97 and 96 points there. Welling, Greys, Swindon Submarine and Paul relegated out down to even more regionalised levels. Manchester United won the FA Cup. Chelsea won the Carabao Cup. City won the Community Shield. Papa John's Trophy was won by Leeds' under-23s. We, of course, won it in back-to-back -back seasons uh, two and three years ago. And the build of base FA Trophy was won by Haven Waterlooville. So, uh, elsewhere around Europe, we look at first. Leagues in focus. In La Liga, it was Real Madrid from Barcelona. Sevilla, Real Sociedad. Atletico, 10th. 10th for Atletico Madrid. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Entirely unacceptable. Fuenlabrada only won two games all season. That's a rip. In uh, the Liga Portuguese, Porto from Benfica from Sporting. Braga only fifth as Vitória Guimarães managed to pick them up into that fourth spot. Uh, in Serie A, it's Juventus from AC Milan from Inter, Atalanta, Roma, Lazio, etc. Napoli only ninth there. Parma relegated again, unfortunately for them. In the Bundesliga, uh, Hanover relegated. They lose their playoff, their relegation playoff. Bayern win the league again for the umpteenth time thankfully not completely in a row but they have won the league almost every single season Hoffenheim second only by two points Leipzig Dortmund etc 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 in the Eredivisie uh, Ajax won the championship congratulations to them in league <clears throat> uh, and Strasbourg are fighting it out in the relegation playoff PSG win the league for the straight time. It's to finish second in season one in this save. No. No, that's when Lille won it in real life. PSG have won the league every season in this save. Nantes second though. Fair play. Nantes in second. Uh, and then the rest is just... Well, leagues that are ongoing. Actually, actually no. Let's show you the, uh, the Belgian league. The other leagues are... Uh, not playable. Anderlecht win the Belgian League. The rest are viewable, but uh, like South American and Turkish League, I think, which is still ongoing. See, the Turkish League, the Super League might have finished. Let's have a look. Super League. Yeah, Fenerbahce win the Super League. Fenerbahce win the Super League. Congratulations to them. So, Champions League. The Champions League was won by Manchester City by four goals to two over Inter. 
The Europa League was won by Athletic Club to Bilbao by a goal to nil over Feyenoord. And Chelsea won the Europa Conference League by three goals to two over Sevilla. And the Super Cup was won by Inter Milan. So that is the end of the season rounder. Actually, let's advance one day so we can see who's going to join us in the Premier League from the Championship playoff final. Uh, no offers for any of the players we're trying to move on, unfortunately. Karamidis was able to win the Golden Boot in League One. Congratulations to him for that. He came... Sorry, no. Goal of the season actually went to Adekoya. He scored a free kick from the edge of the area. I didn't even know Adekoya could take free kicks, to be honest. Barnsley didn't have a great season. He didn't score many goals, but all postage stamp stuff in the corner. Absolutely, you can understand why. That was goal of the season. Uh, Michael Kelly, Le Leganes might be interested in triggering his release clause. I'm going to offer Michael Kelly a new bloody contract then. Uh, let's see what happens with Karamidis' development. And then the championship playoff final will happen a little bit later on today so as ever make sure you drop the video a like make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything else that's to come rather convincingly reading will join us in the premier league middlesbrough stay down wow middlesbrough stay down four nil in a playoff final that's unheard of right i'm gonna get out i'm gonna now go and do my transfers and you'll see me in the blink of an eye in an edit in the next segment of this video Hey guys, this is not actually the beginning of a new video, is it? You'll have seen the season roundup from the previous season as the first bit of this video. And this is the beginning of a new stream, but not a new video for YouTube. So with that in mind, I need to show you what we've done in the transfer market. Because we've advanced, well, probably over two months actually since you last saw us. We're on the first day of the Premier League season. And we have spent quite a bit of money. I have 12.3 million left in my budget. And we have, we are currently spending £490,000 a week on wages. So we have some money left should we need to do anything in January. But I believe that my squad is complete. And we'll show you outgoings first. Because you'll be more familiar with those. So Sean McGurk has left us. He wanted to go. We weren't able to sell him... In the January of last season. To be fair. We would never have gotten 10.5 million for him. Had he left at that point. Getting 10.5 million for him in the summer. Perfect. We only got that really. Because the Premier League. Once your Premier League status. It of course artificially boosts. The cost of your players. Dan Lardy's gone out on loan to Wickham. Uh, he's just not going to be of the level that we need anymore. I'm afraid. Adekoya has gone out on loan to Ipswich. Again. Not going to be of the level of quality that we need. Dimitrios Karamidas is a player that could grow to become a player of the quality that we might need. That's four star for the level that we're at now in the Premier League. Could potentially be Premier League standard. He's currently at championship level. We're hoping that either we'll make some money off him later down the line or he'll be absolutely banging for us come the end of uh, his time with us. But the minute he's only got a year left on his contract so we need to make that decision about him rather sharpish uh jim naylor left us he was inconsistent last year i had a lot of hope for him he was inconsistent and he was whingy and he was affecting the morale at the club so we cashed in made one and a half million pound profit and uh hopefully that's a that's a decision we won't live to regret again josh benson we tried to move out early doors in the window couldn't really get anyone interested. Then we tried again and we got Trabzon Sport and a couple of other Turkish clubs actually to come and bid for him. Now it wasn't 8.25 up front. It was like 6 point something up front and then some more over the course of the next couple of years. But 8.25 million for Josh Benson was a great fee to get again because of the boost to player values from the Premier League. Bram I wanted to keep but he had a release clause in his contract of 700k. Forrest triggered it. I offered him a new deal, but he elected to go and sign with Forrest instead rather than sign a new contract with us with an increased uh, release clause. So I'm not sure whether they'll play him. He played in League 2 on loan from us uh, last season and was decent for them, to be fair. But whether he'll get anything, any sort of a look in at Forrest, I'm not sure. No, Forrest just relegated back down from the Premier League last season. And then the final player that we've loaned out is Alexander Baletic because we signed him for 1.9 million and we've 
instantly loaned him back to his previous club, hoping that he'll get some good experience there, grow some more, and then he'll come back and be first team for us, whether that's in the Premier League or the Championship next season. We'll wait and see. But there is a relic. No, where is it? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Top division relegation wage drop involved in most of the contracts that we've signed with new players. So we might as well start at the bottom then, considering what you've seen at Alexander Balotic then. He's come in for 1.9 million. Victor Ekani has come in as a new left back to start on loan, because I couldn't find anyone to buy, basically, that was any good. It's going to cost me about 1.2 million for the year, but now that we're in the Premier League, that's not too offensive, really. And he looks like he's going to be pretty capable. He's a championship standard player, but should be able to raise his level with some higher quality players around him, I hope. Higher quality players like Jaden Bogle, who is now my new right back. Leading championship player, not necessarily Premier League quality, but we haven't got the finances for Premier League, full, full on Premier League quality at the minute. He signed for six million, which I think is actually a pretty good deal. I'm quite happy with six million for... For Jaden Bogle. So he played 15 games in the Premier League last year for Derby. Did all right. And he's got Premier League experience with Brentford in the seasons prior to that. Did very well in the Championship. Premier League experience with Brighton. Premier League experience with Sheffield United. I think Jaden Bogle is a player that will do us a good piece of service. We signed young Eduardo from Valladolid. They signed him for 3.9. He got relegated with them, had a release clause of 3 million that we activated. And he comes in as one of my highest earners on £41,500 a week. But look at those physicals. Look at those important technicals. He's going to play as a cam for me. And I hope be very, very good for us. We also signed another player I'm very excited about. Attila Shoka. I don't know how to fully pronounce his name. I apologise. Serbian, not my go-to language. Um, but he, I'm hoping, will be another player that will do us a very good service in the midfield. Physically, he's still good, but not amazing. Technic uh, mentally, he's very good. And technically, he's good in the right areas. So I'm hoping that he'll be very, very good indeed. Five and a half million pound paid, all up front, I believe. Now valued 15 to 21. Again, high earner, 46,000 pounds a week. So if, if it doesn't work out, we... Quite a bit out of pocket, but he doesn't he doesn't have a relegation uh, drop in his contract. I believe Eduardo... No, Eduardo doesn't either. Some we were able to agree, some we weren't. Does Jaden Bogle... Bogle does at 15%. Bogle is on £32,000 a week. Uh, then we signed Kanaya Boyce-Clark, a new goalkeeper for us. Paid 34 has some experience at Premier League level with Reading, not a lot. Had a very good season with Stoke in his first year back at Championship level. Stoke as a whole were rubbish last year, so that's why he's not as good last season, his performances. But I think as he's got 16 positions, he's going to be very, very good indeed. And I'm hoping he'll be... Well, he'll, he's definitely improving on what we've got so far. 3.4 million, £28,000 a week. And every, almost everybody has release clauses or relegation release clauses, but they're all for fees that are, we're happy to receive, basically. And then, of course, we signed Luca Oyen. Uh, we had a, an option to buy. It was more of a risk than anything else. We hoped that if we paid 400 grand for him, the Premier League boost in players' re uh, value would take over and he'd be worth a lot more. He's still only worth 400 to 600, but he could be a player we can make some profit on. Or if we end up losing any of our other better players and we get relegated, then Luka Oyen will be first team picture again and it won't matter too much. He, at the minute, he's just offering me some depth. We are going to be losing, or not say losing, purposefully sending out Tony Milton on loan. I am trying to loan Luka Oyen, but so far no one's shown any interest. And we're hoping that we have a good season. Ross Sykes is transfer listed, not been able to get any interest in him either. Zach Viner transfer listed, not able to get any interest in him either hoping though that we will be able to move both on and if we do we'll be looking to sign another center back probably someone that can play center back and right back if possible but we'll wait and see what happens we'll wait and see what happens for now though we have some money left we have some time left in the window and now it's time to play some football 
So, are you ready to see us lose our first game in the Premier League? Everybody say, yay! Tottenham at home to kick us off. This is probably going to be a little bit embarrassing, but we shall do what we can. Jaden, but we're going to play the same way. James Claridge. I'm going to go with the experience of Conor Masterson, although I do fully intend to start Loic Ajax for the majority of games this year. But I'm going to start by throwing Conor Masterson in because he's got the experience. Then left back, Javi Lopez actually isn't fully fit. But thankfully, that's why we've got Victor Icardi loaned in. Now, the Metzala this year is going to go to Shoka. But I'm actually going to change him to a deep-lying playmaker supportive. And then Gabi is going to be the ball-winning midfielder. He was a Metzala last year for us and was really, really good. But he's good in the tackle as well and excellent physically. So... We're going to put him in the ball-winning midfielder role. He doesn't have too high an aggression stat, so it hopefully he should be able to not get too many red cards. On the right, we're still going to go with Peter Bartlett for the time being, although I do have the loney of Maro Alfayete that I can rely on. You saw him come in last year. Then at Cam, it's Eduardo. On the left, Michael Kelly. And up top, Kayon Edwards. Unfortunately, I don't have... Uh, a third goalkeeper that I can call upon, unless there's someone in here. Callum Stedman, he's going to come up whilst Christopher Clearson is injured. And he'll have to go onto the bench for me. Although apparently he's ineligible because he's not in my squad. So, fuck my life. Although, to be fair, I can probably register him actually, can't I? So let me let me do that first. Oh god, this is just painful, isn't it? Um, Callum Stedman, let me read. Well, he's under 21, so he shouldn't need to be registered. Is it because he's on a youth contract? It might be because he's on a youth contract. Oh, he's already involved in another match on the same day. For Christ's sake, Callum. What are you doing to me, pal? Okay, no goalkeeper on the bench for us then on the opening day of the Premier League season. Lower Kayak's on the bench. Zach Viner. Uh, Tony Milton. Alfayete. Luca Oyen. We brought in Lubitsky as well, actually. I'm not sure if you saw him towards the end of last season. We paid 2.3 million for Feyenoord. He's now added at 8.8 .8 to 10. Really good squad player. Kind of my Josh Benson replacement replacement really and then we'll throw Javi Lopez on the bench as well Cruz we're trying to get out on loan too hopefully he can grow quite well but so far nobody's shown any interest so we've managed to move on some of the players we wanted to move on we haven't been able to move on all of the players we've wanted to move on I forgot actually we can have nine named substitutes in the Premier League so that's cracking right auto number two Ikani here we go then now let's go and play Tottenham in the first game of the season wish me luck what does their starting lineup look like? Dean Henderson in goal. Maxence Lacroix at centre back. Sandro Tonali in their midfield. Alfie Devine as well. A number of the other names I don't recognise. They've got Tyler Adams on the bench. Yosha Vanaman. Diogo Jota. Ibira Ezzi. Victor Mikalenko. Joe Willock. Thomas Tuchel is their manager, for Christ's sake. Um, nothing to lose here. Nothing to lose here. Go out and play with no pressure on you. Uh, I'm really not that fast. Mood in the dressing room is they have great self-belief. James Carriage is 175th performance. Oh, wish me luck because I think I'm going to need it. I think I need to take a breath as well, actually. Just 30 minutes of... Right, this is going to be a long video probably, but hopefully you enjoy it. Welcome to the Premier League. Oh, an early free kick. Gabby flicks it on and... No, Gabby's going to get himself sent. I said I hoped he'd have the intelligence... To not get himself a second yellow card. He's used the hand there. And now he's got himself sent off. What a great way to start the season, Darko. Cheers, pal. Thankfully, there's less games in a Premier League season than the Championship. So the fixture list shouldn't be quite so... Oh, my God. The fixture list shouldn't be quite so congested. That's a hell of a goal, though, from Ibira Ezzi. And we will not be scoring goals of that sort of quality regularly this season. The occasional one... Yeah, but, oh God, that was a bit good, wasn't it? Scalvini, James, Diogo Jota floats it to the back post and Ezzy on the Paolo Di Canio far top corner. Now they're starting to find their rhythm. It's late in the game, but they are starting to find their rhythm now, aren't they? Alfie Devine, they've got options. Oh my God, they're scoring worldies left, right and centre. 2-0 Tottenham. Masari. Welcome to the Premier League. This is going to be a really tough season. Oh, I might get the sack. Not a third worldie, surely. Yep. Three worldies. Welcome to the Premier League. My God. 
the quality of goals from this Tottenham team. We don't deserve a 3-0 defeat. I think that's harsh on us. But if you're going to get a man sent off with a needless handball, that's first time from Tonali as well, then um, what can you do? That's game. We were good until the red card, but turns out, uh, I'll say unlucky. So the same, this team, minus Darko Gavi, performed admirably against Tottenham for an hour till the red card. So I'm going to give them the chance to do it again. Oh, again, Jack here in goal for them. Jeremy Frimpong for Kaio Tomori, Murato Nuno Tavares. Mayan Sonset, Leon Bailey, I don't know who Sudakov is. Uh, Traore, I'm not sure what H. Hamed Junior Traore, Harvey Vale and Alexander Isak. Yikes. Watch it, let me get all the way to the box and then end the highlight. Cross comes in. Michael Kelly's there. Big tone, square it. Eduardo! Let the history books know the first goal for Cambridge United at Premier League level is young starlet Eduardo. As Manny raids with 251 with the perfect timing. Michael Kelly notes it down. Big tone squares it. Eduardo, our new favourite youngster from Rayo Valladolid. And we're in front. Yes, Manny. Thank you very much, my man. I hope you're well, mate. I hope the stream went well as well. Thank you for raiding over. Everyone that's joining me, I will give you the career command in chat, or career one and career two commands in chat. So you know the story of this save. We are at Cambridge United. We have been for 10 years. This is season 10. And after getting battered 3-0 by Tottenham on the opening day, although it was 0-0 till the hour mark, and then we got a man sent off, uh, we held our own. Newcastle had all of the play in the opening 10 minutes here, but we've scored going the other way on the counter-attack. And now it's probably just going to be all Newcastle will end up losing 5-1. But we've scored a... What? Is he give a pen? VAR! V VAR, come on! Our first ever VAR in the Premier League! Oh. P penalty ordered. <laughs> oh. Yellow card for Michael Kelly. And Alexander Isak buries it. 1-1. One, one. We weren't in front for long. Never mind. Uh, it was nice whilst it lasted. Thank you, Brendo, 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 Avarupa, Trippy, and uh, uh, Achmar for the follows since the raid from any preset it, dude. I hope you and the family are well. I hope Malachi had a good birthday. If you, on the basis of what you've seen so far, chat, what would you say our season ending points tally would be? I, at this rate, I'd be happy to get 30 points, to be honest. We'll have a look through, actually, previous seasons and see w about what would be a, a good idea of what would keep us up, survival-wise. Still the end of the first half here. Edwards, he's made the run there, Michael Kelly. Peter Bartley's in behind. Go on, Pete. Oh, that wasn't necessarily worth waiting for, was it? 45, 35, 42. A wide, a wide range. Steph had 17 shots in the first half. I'm going to point my finger and say we're not creative enough. We're not positive enough. I'm going to go balanced rather than cautious. We've not really had more of the ball since I tried to alter the way that we're playing either. So this is just going to... 24? Come on, Charlie. I think you'll get survival, but it will be a battle because it's me. Yeah. If, if there's anything that ever makes more sense, it's that. Thanks for the follow, Akia Kin. Welcome to the channel. Eight. Get out, Ali. Oh, well, we're not going to get any here. No, are we maybe going to get one? Tomori's oh, been judged fractionally offside, although I think it's going to stand because the players were running off celebrating with their arms in the air. Yep, goal awarded. 2-1 Newcastle. It's not even close to offside. Admittedly, we've been hammered and how we haven't conceded five or more i don't know 3.56 xg for newcastle we got wiped the floor with there um uh i'll just say that wasn't that wasn't great lads i admit like i'm quite happy to admit we're at, we're outclassed at new level but that certainly wasn't good enough Oh, it's going to be a long season. It's going to be a very long season. 
Omar Dap has suggested that we don't have what it takes. I'm not going to get called into that. Thank you. As a matter, we didn't deserve to win. We absolutely didn't deserve to win. Jesus, we didn't deserve the point. Uh, four days Bristol City away. That's in the cup. So we'll give everyone a couple of days rest. And then, right, we were going to have a look at the previous seasons, weren't we? And see what we needed to stay up. So let's start at the very beginning of the save. 33 would have been enough season one. Then 35, so averaging 34 points. 35 again. Then 28 would have been enough to stay up that season. Jesus, hang on, let me, let me, let me get my calculator out. And we'll, we'll add this up and then work out an average. So 33. 35. 35. 28. I can't believe that. 20, 28 points would have kept you up that year. Then, then you needed the foot. Look how close that is. 39, 39, 39, 39, 40. Southampton gutted to get relegated, aren't they? Would have needed 40 that season, just to guarantee it. Then 33. Then 28 again. Wow. Two seasons out of four. 28 points would have been enough. Then 28 again. And then 31. And then we're up to date, aren't we? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine seasons. Divide that by nine. It's 291 points divided by nine. The average, the average amount of points we need to stay up is 32.5. Three, 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 three. So 33 points. The average is about 33 points. 32 to 33 points. So we'll aim for 33. And then if we don't get there, we're probably going down. Thank you for the follow, Kieran. Welcome to the channel, mate. 33 points is absolutely doable, though. Yeah, I agree. Jesus, Liverpool at home in our next game as well. Welcome to the Prem. Christ. Bristol City away. I can't remember how we did against them last year in the Championship. I'd be intrigued to find out before we actually jump in, if I can. So let's head to the dressing room. And I'm just going to click on James Claridge's name. Let's have a look at our past meetings with Bristol City. A uh, bit dodgy in our dealings in League One, but at Championship level, pretty solid. So let's see how we get on today then. Uh, yeah, time to turn up and actually put in a result, please, lads. Uh, I'm not going to get drawn into stuff about, oh, your record's really good here and there. No, it doesn't matter at all. I'm beating in five matches against Bristol City. Don't believe in that stuff. We just want to play football. We just want to win. I'm not surprised you're sunburned if you're out in it for 42 bloody kilometres. You have red hair jeans. But I have red hair. <laughs> Hello, red hair jeans. It's got red hair. Why would you play football yesterday, Ellie? It was 30 fucking degrees, pal. Fuck that. Yesterday was not the day to go and play football. Bloody hell, mate. Put yourself through the ringer there. All right, come on, gents. Let's see what we've got today, shall we? Gabby, Kayon Edwards, Michael Kelly, Kayon Edwards. Oof, nearly. Ah. Pfft. Tuck it away, will you? Christ. 1 0 Bristol City. Herculano destroying James Claridge. That was. um. Hard to watch, really. Sharman Lowe with a long goal kick. James Clary's just, well, shits the bed, really. And that's not a bad finish. Please? Out of the Carabao Cup we go, then. Right. Sick one. Uh, that was rubbish, lads, let's be honest. 
So we've not started the season well. All of the new faces haven't yet really bedded in that well. We tried to make changes to get us set up for the Premier League. And whilst on an individual player basis, we are attribute wise better than we were. As a group, they are not yet accustomed to one another. Liverpool at home, going to be another uh, another pretty straight up defeat. Alisson, Trent, Fafana, Aaron's, Rice, Ravella, Mariba, Mbappe, Awa. Yummy! Hope you like the taste of conceding goals because this is going to be a rout. Yeah. 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 We're probably going to go down in an embarrassing fashion. I might even end up getting sacked if we go down this poorly. The positive is we've only conceded three goals from those 60-odd shots on, tar on goal. But Ch oh Chelsea next, Chelsea away next. Jesus Christ! Here we go, Chelsea away. As if we weren't already stretched enough. Reese James, Uma Solit, Bastoni, Kai Havertz, Jamal Musiala. Some regens that no doubt will be spectacular. Marcelino is their manager. I will outstretch arms. Nobody expects us to get a win, so just play some football. I don't know. Chelsea, oh, these fit this fix list has been brutal at the beginning of the season, hasn't it? Absolutely destructive. Kelly's in. Edwards is in. Kayon Edwards scores a goal in the Premier League. Kayon Edwards is off the mark for the season. And he's had the same reaction as me. Still not expecting to get a result, but get in. Just pleased to see Edwards on the score sheet. And for Eduardo, the man that I hoped would be the creative man in that camera roll to get the assist as well, they create a partnership. We'll be very, very happy indeed. Newcastle take the lead against Tottenham. Corner for Chelsea. Penalty for Chelsea. VAR. Pen. Penalty awarded for a push. Uh, Mason Mount from the spot buries it. Chelsea level. Okay, Javier Lopez just laid down in front of the ball, got a touch on it, and then they crossed it anyway. Harding, Mount, Elliott, tackle. Oh, clear it! No! Loic! How's that gone in? He's kicked it against the man that's lying on the floor. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. To lose a game like that, in that manner, is... Oh. Disgraceful. A push for a penalty, and then that second goal. We can't do that. If we're gonna if we're gonna stay up, we just can't do that. Lovely ball by Zinc. Eduardo's in. And he's put it in a stand. That's awful. It's a corner though. Definitely the keeper made some sort of interception. 96th minute. Shoker two takes said corner. Delivers it in and they've cleared it away. Kayon Edwards it falls to. 
who's given it away to Kai Havertz. Shoko wins it back, but there's the final whistle. Oh, pick up my heart, put it underneath your foot and stamp on it. Heartbroken. I can't believe we've thrown that away. 1-0 up until the last 12 minutes. And then we push someone in a box and give away a penalty. And that... That winner for them is disgusting. I can't believe it. He's literally... He can kick it anywhere. Sideways, up in the air. He's kicked it on the floor at the man that's lying on the floor next to him. I think... I think I'm done for today. Not sure I can take much more of that. I'm willing to experiment. Piss off. Ah, oh, dearie me. Aston Villa at home next. Can I hold a team meeting? Uh, I'm going to say... It's keen to ensure our heads don't drop. Good. Everyone's very happy. Big positive uptick in... Morale because of it. Good. Good. Right. That will do us for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. On YouTube, make sure you drop the video a like if you're enjoying. And come and follow me on Twitch so you don't miss out on any more. But that is us for now. I will see you in the next one.